Hey there, everybody. Today we're talking about Builder Trend Bids, and this is a super powerful feature that I know a lot of you aren't using. I wasn't for a little bit either, but it is really, really powerful. I wanna show you how it actually works and how it can really help you to streamline your process and be proactive about your estimate. So keep in mind that this is a part of a bigger series. Check out the playlist that we have on this, and we're gonna go deeper into this as we get into estimates and how it relates to purchase orders and bills as well. But we wanna specifically talk about bills during this video today, all right? So what we're thinking about here is that even if your subs are involved in Builder Trend, all right, which is the case for a lot of us, right? I still want you to use bids. It's a great tool for proactively managing your budget. So you don't need involvement from your subcontractors. It's a great introductory place for your subs to get engaged with you and your Builder Trend process, but it's not a 100% requirement. All right, I'm gonna talk through my experience a little bit too as well, because I'm just like you. I struggle to get the subs to use the system, but this has been one of those really good entry points where if we can get them to use bids, maybe then we can get them to use purchase orders, get them to look at the schedule, all of the above. All right, let's get into it. How does this actually work? So use bids to dial in your estimate. That's what we're doing here. We're gonna estimate, almost all of us are gonna estimate before we have bids, right? At least some kind of ballpark we're doing before we have bids, but then we actually get our subcontractors or our suppliers to give us some actual hard numbers. Create a bid package from an estimate or a template. I'm gonna demonstrate this all for you in a second. I love to do it from an estimate. Indicate the subs for whom you plan to get a bid or from whom you plan to get a bid. So who are we looking to get bids from? Again, not all of these people need to be in, in Builder Trend, right? Some might be, some might not be. We have a way of kind of manually entering their information if we need to. Record and accept or reject any bids. And then it's our launch point for bills and POs. I have a different video on that where we really dive into how that works. I'm gonna uh, tease it a little bit as we get into exactly how this works. So I want to really focus on the actual bid process right now. All right. So let's see it within Builder Trend, what we're talking about here with bids. Okay. So I like to initiate my bids from an estimate. So we want to get to a point where we have our estimate in Builder Trend. If you're using Builder Trend to create your estimate, great. You're already there. If not, I want you to use uh, some other system, but upload it into Builder Trend always. Okay. The only way we're going to be able to use the job costing budget, the bids, the purchase order, see if we're actually performing to plan is if we get our estimate into Builder Trend. I have some videos on how that works, on how you can import as well. And when we import, we really want to make use of the cost type and indicate whether or not it's a bid or an allowance. We can save a ton of time by indicating that mark as. So if I go to my filter here, if I were to filter my entire estimate by mark as bid, this is very, very helpful for me. So when I'm importing, I really wanna think about what are the items that I might wanna be getting bids for from. And so I filtered that down. And so part of my prep as I'm setting up Builder Trend would be to go through these items and create bid packages for them. Now it doesn't need to be one bid package for each of those. You would pretty much do this by trade. So for example, I could grab all the plumbing, grab all the electrical, etc. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a bid package for electrical. And again, what I like to do is to create these from the estimate, not to templatize them because I like to have them come through. Uh, the estimate kind of helps to indicate whether it's relevant or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter my estimate right now on cost code, I'm just gonna start typing electric, okay? And I'm just gonna select all, okay? Because I know that not all are going to be showing up here because it's only those that it's, I'm already also filtered on bid. So I've got rough electrical and I've got finished electrical. Those two things are showing up. I'm gonna get one bid for both of those items from, from my contractors, right? So I can actually select all of those at once Okay, in this case, just the two, but you see how filtering really helps me there. And now from these two items, I can go to create a bid package. And that's exactly what I want to do. Now, this bid package, we're gonna take the title, we're gonna uh, call this electric. Okay, I usually do not want to allow multiple approved bids. That really messes with the schedule. Deadline, this is why it's so important to use a really strong schedule to have the schedule be the really the core of your entire system. I'm gonna to link to schedule and go to project start. Sorry, project start here. And I'm gonna say, you know, 90 days before I'd like to have my electrical bid in. I could potentially add some internal notes here. Here I have my two line items, rough electric and finished electrical. You could put in a more, you know, a square foot price or something like that. In this case, I'm just gonna do a one each. They're probably gonna give me more detail, but I just want the total number in here. Bid package description, I can grab that from my contract or in this case, my specification. So I can go and grab my 
electrical specs here and put them in there. I also want to attach a document. I'm going to show you that as well. All right. But right now I'm just going to leave it as it is. Let's save that bid package. All right. So it's there. Actually, let's add some kind of document to this. I don't know what uh, this will look like, but um, we'll kind of just do that. We got a set of plans that'll not really relevant to this sample project, but we'll just put something in there. All right, so you do, you would want them to have in their you know request what we're actually trying to bid off of, right? All right, that's uploaded. We can save that. This is the bid package. I like to think of the bid package as kind of the container. And then from that, we then have requests. Now, right now, I have no requests out there. I can certainly add subs from whom I'd like to request. And the cool thing about this is if you set your subs up and really think about their trade and all that, I can just type here electric and it's going to show me all my electric. I could select all of them. I'm not going to at this point. You know, there's certain projects that we may or may not want different uh, vendors to to bid out. I'm going to use this Oakvale Electric because that's my internal kind of sample account that I can play with. And then my invitation text, which by the way, we can adjust as default. But right now I'm just going to say, can you please bid out this edition? Okay, right there. And we can click save on that. Bid package has been saved successfully. All right, now they will get a notification if we send this to them. So me clicking send will then let them know that we'd like their submission. If they're in Builder Trend, if they're not in Builder Trend, they're not gonna get anything because they we don't have their info. But if they are, then they get this nice little email here. Now, if they get this email, that's good. Hopefully they fill it out there, right? But we don't need them to, okay? So we can do it a couple ways. I'm gonna show you. Pretend that they don't get this for a second. Uh, basically, let me go to my bids and just organize this a little bit. So we go to our bids. What you want to have here is a bid package for all of your major trades, right? That's kind of the, the target of where you want to be. And again, in theory, we could have our subs in the system and adding their bids in the system, but we don't need that to be the case, right? So what's neat about this is I can really easily organize. If I want to say add somebody else to this, uh, let me see. Yep. Put in just another kind of sample vendor here. It helps you to understand, especially your other other aspects of the team, helps you to understand like who are we getting bids from? Okay, bidding is currently open here. And maybe our subcontractor is in here and we can um, view, have the bid come through the system. I'm gonna show you that in a second, but it doesn't have to be. So what I mean by that is we can go into this bid request and we can edit it right here. Okay, like we get the bid over the phone, they send an email, maybe they send an estimate like this one is showing right here, right? So if they send that estimate, why don't I just go here and go edit bid, okay? And yes, I do want to edit bid on behalf of the subcontractor. They're not in the system yet, They're not, they don't wanna use it, whatever. They've given me an estimate, 14,975, so I'm gonna attach the document here for sure. Okay, so let's download the doc. So I can, Always want the document uploaded so we can reference it. Now they give me a 14,975. It might not be specifically um, in the rough slash finish, so I might have to do a little bit of work on that myself, right? All right, so there's my 14,975, and then potentially notes does not include generator, whatever, right? And so we can save that. That's here now. I haven't necessarily accepted it, but it's submitted. And so we can continuously track, and this should be a big part of your pre-construction process. Establish your bid packages, establish the subs from whom you're accepting bids or requesting bids, and then track them to completion. Even if you kind of use the same person every time, right? You don't need this to be this gigantic competition, but we should get into the rep of trying to get an estimate from everybody. And sometimes too, it's like, I'm not gonna get a formal estimate. All right, we'll have the conversation with them and say, listen, we got an addition coming up. It's very similar to X, Y, and Z project that you did before. Do you think it's more or less? You just do that and then submit your own kind of estimated bid. It doesn't have to be this big official thing that we sign off on, okay? Let's go to uh, from the, the subcontractor side, right? So if we were to get this request here, this is what the sub's gonna see. They can review and submit the bid here. Okay, potentially actually logging into Builder Trend itself, right? So I'm able to look at what the scope of work is. I can reference the document as well, which is gonna be big, okay? And then ultimately I'm going to update my bid and, and just provide a bid. So 11,000 for my rough, whatever it is. Maybe I'm gonna say um, 4,000 for the finish. 
Okay, and then I can and I should attach a document as well, right? So we can do that, upload that document and submit the bid. Okay, so it's a $15,000 bid. And then on in my end here, I'm receiving these bids coming through. I should want my subs to use the system, but if they don't, again, we can still do it. They can email it to me and then my team can look at it. And so I can look at these bids and decide what I wanna do with that. And this will help educate my estimate. Now, what I'm going to demonstrate here, we're gonna scratch the surface. Then we're gonna go into further detail in a separate video of how this really ties into everything. But what we want to do is we want to look at these bids, we want to consider these bids, and we want to make a selection. Now, my rule is that this is all us as the GC, as the builder. We are the ones making the decision. This is not necessarily something that we're sharing with our customer and having them provide input. For that, that's a selection, okay? So if for any reason you have a subcontracted service that seems to be more like, hey, I want the client's feedback on which route we're going here, that to me is a selection. So take those bids and that process and move it to the selections. A good example of that would be HVAC. We often bring HVAC into a selection because there's a lot of options. Do we wanna stick with radiator heat? Do we wanna to switch to forced air? Does mini splits make sense? And there's a lot of options usually with HVAC that the client is kind of having a little bit of an input on those meetings. So we would have them in there as well. All right, in any case here, I'm going to take a bid and I'm going to decide what to do with it. Here, I'm going to set to approve. Okay, now when I do, you can notify the winner, you can notify the losers, and we can of course create a purchase order, which is exactly what I'm gonna do on the follow up video. So I'm gonna leave that off for now. I'm gonna kind of recreate this and do another video on that. But let me just approve this for a second. We, we've done that. Let's look at then from the contractor side of things, your bid was approved. And then we have that one that's been declined, right? So I got both coming to the same email here. So one will say that it's got approved, one would say it's been declined. I had to check the box. So you don't have to notify your, uh, your vendors on whether that's been happening. But now that it's been approved, my bidding has been closed and I can do some other stuff that, again, I'm gonna do that in a separate video to really show you how bids can connect to everything. All right, so I want you to explore bids. And again, even if it's just you and your team using them to organize the different estimates that you got coming in, even if it's just for a project, it's two or three of them, that's okay. Your goal is to get to a full, anybody that's coming through for whom I'm gonna be issuing purchase orders, big time spending I'm gonna be doing with somebody, I wanna be getting bids so we have a way of tracking it all the way through. I'm gonna show you that entire life cycle on a follow up video, we'll link to it here when we're done with it. Let me know what questions you have, what issues you've run into, and also I wanna know from you, are your subcontractors using Builder Trend? Are they getting in there? What has been successful for you to get them to use the system? We all know that's where we wanna be. I'll see you in the next video.